Now we're going to jump into a demo. This is going to be a single tool agent. Here's what we're building. We're building something super simple. And I already explained this particular one, but I'm going to go over it again. A user is going to ask a specific query to the LLM. This, by the way, is our first single agent system. It's one agent because it's one LLM that we're going to be using. And this LLM, we're going to put some conditions for it to stop. I'm going to show you that in the code and use the search tool to gather information that it needs to answer the user request or the user query. This is, I think, a the hello world for building agentic systems. And I'm excited to get into the code next. The script that we will be looking at now is augmented LLM underscore FC that PY. So this is the example that I just explained where we're going to have an input a user query, and then we're going to have the LLM. This is the single agent LLM, and then we're going to have an output. So the LLM is connected to external tool. In this case, we're going to be using EXA search. EXA has excellent APIs for searching, and it's quite robust, actually, and it supports a lot of different types of searches on the web. So this is the one that we're recommending. This means that you will have to go and set up EXA API key. If you're using some other type of search API or search tool, feel free to replace this here. You're not required to always use the same tools and models that I'm using. Hopefully you are experienced enough to be able to switch these out and use whatever tool it is that you prefer. In this example in particular, this is the one that I prefer to use. This is going to be the flow here. So user provides a query. The LLM determines if external information is needed, right? It's going to use function calling. If needed, the LLM uses the access search to retrieve relevant information. The LLM incorporates the retrieved information into its response now, and then the final response is returned to the user. That's basically the flow here. And then here is the XI API key that we're configuring. We also added the XI API key into this. So again, you will use XI API key equal, and you will put your API key here. You will need to go and create an XI API key. We're going to provide you a link below this video for you to go and set up that key yourself. It's quite easy. It's very straightforward to do. Let's now get into the actual code. Now, this class right here, basically what it's going to do, it's going to have a search function, and this search receives a query, and then you can also specify the number of results. So this exa search API does have this particular parameter. And these are the two important parameters for now. And then here we basically just define what this search is going to do. So here we have some code, and this code basically is going to call that exa client, and it's going to say query, the number of results. This doesn't matter too much. This is just some settings that we are just configuring here. So use auto prompt, basically it's just going to do some optimization there. And then this is just the format. And this is just the type of search it's going to perform. There are different kinds of searches that it can perform. All right. So this is just formatting the result once we get that result. And then we're just going to return that result. Now let's touch on this second class here, which is augmented LLM. So this is basically what's going to orchestrate this particular agent. And here we have the exa search tool. This is just the init function. Okay. And then now we have format search result. This is just going to format the results. That is not so important. This is going to be the important function right here. We're going to receive a query, okay, from the user. And then we have to define tools. So this is for function calling purposes. So the tools that we're going to define here is perform search. And what is that about? Well, it determines if web search is needed to answer the user's query. And then you can see the properties is should it search, right? It's a Boolean. And then it sends also some reasoning here as well. So this determines whether it needs to perform a search or not. Then we have another tool that we're passing to this as well. So this particular function here is about optimizing search query. What does it do? It generates an optimized search query to find the most relevant information. And then it says, here's the optimized query and here is the explanation. So those are the two tools that we're defining here. You can continue to add more tools if you want right here as well. And then here we have our system message. In the system message, we're saying you're an AI assistant that performs two functions. And here, the two functions are defined. So determine if external search is needed based on some criteria, right? So we have the criteria right there. And then determine if search is not needed. Again, this will have to determine that. And then here it says optimize the search query. This is more about optimize the search query. This could have been made a lot simpler, but I wanted to show you the use of two functions. I think that's pretty interesting. That's, I think, a neat example because then you also have to think about these complex agentic systems will be using various different tools. And so it's good to start with something like this already. This is going to be a good starting point to get into that mindset. And then says perform both functions 
for every user query. So here are just the messages. Again, this is how we structure it. We're going to be calling an OLM for this. And now we get chat completion. Get chat completion, where is that coming from? So that's coming from our utils. Utils, this is something that we used in the prompt engineering for dev scores. It's the same complete function right here. It's a very basic function. Basically, it's just going to call the endpoints, right? And this one, if the tools are present, we're going to call that. If not, then it's just going to make this call right here, which is a very standard call. And this particular one is going to be able to do parallel tool calling, which is pretty awesome feature because if you need to do multiple tool calls, you don't need to call the endpoints, you know, many times. You do that, you do that in one go. And that's basically your parallel tool calls. All right, so let's go back to the script right here and then continue with the code explanation. So these are just some values here. And then this one is going to parse the tool calls from the response. So here we're doing the parsing. So this is just going to parse that. Keep in mind again that we have made the call here. So we have that in response and we have all that information response, which we need to extract to decide what it is that we're going to do next. And we're doing that in code, right? Everything we're taking care of ourselves. There's not a lot of automation here yet. Everything we are defining in code, the way how this agent behaves and the steps that it takes. All right. So once that's done, then let's go here at the bottom. This one is just a function to decide whether you should search, right? And then it's going to call this decision and query, you know, this function right here. So that's what it's going to call. You can see it right there. And then here is just the generate response. So let's look at what this includes. You can see down here that we are also taking care of the conversation history. That's where we're adding the conversation history. This is really simple to manage. And then here it's determining if search should be used. That's the same function that we just discussed. And then it goes into here. If, if it should search, then it's going to go to the different steps. It's going to call the search tool and so forth. And here, notice that it's using that optimized query. And then here, it's just going to display the results. And finally, down here, we have other system messages. We're going to make another call. And this one says, you're an AI assistant augmented with the ability to search the web for information. And for the user's query, you have the following search results that may contain relevant information. Use these results to inform your response and cite sources with appropriate. So this is just a search text. Again, what we're receiving from the search tool is what we're going to be passing here. And then that way the model is able to compose the final response that we want based on the user query. These are just some guidelines that it will follow to generate a good response. And then finally, it will call the system. So if it doesn't have any external results, then it's just going to say this one right here. It's just going to use this one. But it's highly likely that in our example, we will have search results. And then finally, it's going to generate response. So you can see if I collapse this, and I collapse this one here. I just want to make that readable. You can see that now it's going to get chat completion. It's going to have the messages. It has all the information, including the search results. Then again, it's going to store here in this conversation history. So once we have the response, then we can send it. And then in the main, we're going to have all that information. And we're just going to present it and print it out in the terminal. Since this is a script that we can run in the terminal, you will see all the results here. I'm going to show you that in a bit. So that's a brief explanation of what the code is. I would highly encourage you to pause the video and go through the code yourself. I am not going to go through each line of code. There are certain things here, such as the function calling, that are super important to understand. If you don't understand function calling after this short explanation, Again, I would encourage you to check out our previous course, Prompt Engineering for Devs, which is a requirement to this course, to go over and revise that material. That's really important. Let's go and run this script. We're going to go here and then Python, Augmented LLM FC PY, and then I'm going to run this. Notice that it says no module found at env, and the reason why, I'm going to leave these mistakes in the video because they happen. It can happen to anyone. I need to activate my environment. It's going to be source, activate, advanced agents. Once that's activated, I should be able to run the code or the script, right? Let's go. So augmented LLM with XS search with the function calling capabilities, type exit to quit. This is the basic program right here. You can set this up however you want. You can modify it however you want. I think the script allows for basic experimentation. You can change it if you want to extend its capabilities. So the user would say, what's the latest on Tesla? I want to know what's the latest news on Tesla. Again, this is a search agent. So what is it going to do? First, it's going to do a search decision. So here it's going to say true. It's going to use the search tool. 
and the reasoning is because the query asks about the latest information on Tessa, which is a current event and subject to frequent updates. And then it says it has this optimized query. Then it optimizes the query. This is the one that's going to use for the search engine. And the explanation is that the query was optimized by specifying latest news, right? This one doesn't have it. So this is really nice because it's basically augmenting the queries, doing query augmentation. And so it says, and including the current month and year to ensure the most recent information is retrieved. This is another thing that I also find that agents don't do so well, but you can look at it right here. So what does it say? It says, searching for October 2023. Why did this happen? I'm going to leave this here. I'm not going to change it, but why did this happen? This is something I want you to think about. The reason is because that model that I'm using that is part of the agent has no knowledge of the recent year, right? Has no knowledge of that. In the upcoming chapters, we're going to be fixing this particular issue. So you can see that there are multiple decisions that we need to make when we're building this agent from scratch. We need to make the agent understand what is the current time. Otherwise, it's going to do a search that is not going to be useful for us. However, I'm going to leave it as it is, as I said, because these are things that you're going to run into all the time when you're building these agentic systems, especially if you're building them from scratch. It's going to look at 2023, right? It's going to look at those old dates and it's going to pull that information. We know that the search system is working because we're getting information right here. You can see it. Okay, we can see all of these search results. In fact, there were five search results. And then finally, the assistant takes all of that information. We make a call to the LLM. And then the LLM basically summarizes that information. You can see it's using those sources. So there's a lot of different things that we need to enhance. And that's what this course is going to be about. How do we format things? How do we make the search agent has access to the current date? Because that's an important part of the search query, specifically for search agents. That's going to be useful. And there are a lot of things that you want to consider, right? Like even the optimized query as well. That's, you know, you can argue that this is not really the most optimized query. And so what is the most optimized query? What kind of news should it look at? What kind of search you should perform? All of these things need to be optimized. This is why I wanted to do this example. I wanted to start off with this example for you to get excited about this. We're going to be solving all of these problems, all of these issues. We're going to be talking about how to deal with dates, how to make optimized queries, how to fix the search how to improve the search results that we're getting, how to format things, how to make the calls, when do we make the calls, and the control flow of the program. When do we add automation, right? How do we optimize the code as well when it's running some maybe latency intensive task? And sometimes you even want human input as well. All of these things we need to talk about when we build with agents. And I just wanted to highlight this in this particular example for you to get excited, for you to understand how challenging this can be when you're building things from scratch, but also to have more awareness and more knowledge of what are the important things that you need to take care of when you're building these agentic systems.